Problem Solving Using Number Patterns Lesson 9.10 So just to remind you, a number pattern is an ordered set of numbers that will help us to predict what number will come next. We can look at the pattern that the numbers are making to help us figure out what comes next or what's missing. We can use number patterns to count back by one hundredths. We think of one less hundred each time. We can count on by one hundredths. We can think of one more hundred each time. So look at my examples here. We're counting back by hundreds. We're counting on by hundreds. When we count back, the tens and the ones are staying the same because we're just moving the hundreds. We're counting back by hundreds. So only the hundreds change and they get smaller. It's one less each time. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And instead of writing a zero here, because we don't have to, we just write 30. See? That would be one less hundred than 130. See? When we count on, we can even start where there's no hundreds. And we add a hundred, now we have 127. We add another hundred, we have 227. And the tens and ones are staying the same because we're only counting on by hundreds. So only the hundreds place changes. And it counts on, and they each get bigger by one more. So we can look for number patterns like these to help us figure out what is a hundred more or a hundred less or ten more or ten less. We can count on or count back by tens. We look at the tens place and that will help us. We have two tens, three tens, and then it goes to some number and then five tens, six tens. So is this counting on and getting bigger or counting back and getting smaller? Well, this is getting bigger, isn't it? Going from a 2 to a 3. Do you know what the missing 10 is? It would be 4 tens, wouldn't it? And 7 ones. Then we have 5 tens, 6 tens. So that would be 7 tens, wouldn't, wouldn't it? We'd have a 77 for 7 tens and 7 ones. Now let's look at this one. We have 327. Now remember, we're counting on or back by tens. Then we have 337. So don't worry about the hundreds place, just worry about the tens place. See, because that's what we're doing. We're doing it by tens. Is it getting bigger in the tens place or going back and getting smaller? Well, these are getting bigger, so we're going to count on. We have two tens, three tens. This would be four tens, wouldn't it? And we'd have our 300, and we'd have our seven in the ones place. So we'd have 347. So we have four in the tens place, five in the tens place, six in the tens place. So do you know what number would go here? It would be a seven in the tens place, wouldn't it? And the hundreds and the ones stayed the same. Let's try this one. Is it counting on or counting back? We have 190, 180. What's happening in the tens place? It went to nine, to eight. Ah, it's getting smaller. So it's counting back. So the next one would be 170. That would be one less 10, see? Then we have a six in the tens place, a five in the tens place. So that would be a four in the tens place, wouldn't it? It would be 140, see? Let's try this one. Now remember, the instructions said count on or count back by tens. So we're only worried about the tens place. We've got one 10 and then something, then three tens, then four tens. So is it is the tens place getting larger and counting on, or is it getting smaller and counting back? Ooh, it's getting larger, isn't it? We have a three and then a four. So, what's one larger ten than this one? We'd have eight twenty-four, wouldn't we? That would be one more ten. So we have one in the tens place, two in the tens place, three in the tens place, four in the tens place. That would be a five in the tens place, wouldn't it? 854. Let's try this one. We're worried about the tens place, remember, because we're counting on or counting back by tens. So there's our tens place. What's happening? Is it getting larger and counting on, or is it getting smaller and counting back? Five, four, three. Mmm, it's counting back. So what's one less than a three? A two. So it would be 528. What would be a, one less than this two? It'd be 518, and if that's what you got, you're right, okay? Now, 
Let's count on or count back by hundreds. We did by tens. Let's try by hundreds. Is it counting on or counting back? Are the hundreds place digits getting larger or smaller? It goes from a one to some missing numbers to a four to a five. Well, they're getting bigger, so it's counting on. So we need to add one more hundred to this. So we have 203, don't we? Then do you know what would be here if we added one more hundred? If you said 303, you're right. Then it goes 403, 503. See the pattern the hundreds are making? There's a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, because we're counting on by hundreds. Let's try this one. It starts off with just 51. Then it goes to 151, then 251. So do you see the pattern? Is it counting on or counting back? And the hundreds place is slowly adding one more, isn't it? So it's counting on. So if we added one more hundred to this, do you know what number we'd have? We've got zero hundreds, 100, 200, 351, and then 451. See, we're just adding a 100. Let's try this one. We've got some missing number, and then it says 874, 774, and then some number, and then it goes all the way down to 574. So the hundreds place is getting smaller, isn't it? See how they're getting smaller? Well, if they're getting smaller as they go this way, that means this one had to be bigger. We can even start here and go that way if it helps us. We have a five in the hundreds place, then a missing number, then a seven, then an eight. Well, then that would be a nine in the hundreds place, wouldn't it? So now let's go back this way and see if that if we could do it this way. 974, 874, 774. This would be 674. See? Now what you can also do is if you have something like this and you need extra help, you can use models of hundreds and tens and ones. You can also make a list. We have a blank and stack them to compare them. Then we have 874, 774, a blank, and then 574. And maybe that will help you see what's happening here. So the 74s are staying the same, so we know it's going to have a 74 in these two spaces, right? And then we can look at the hundreds place and see what happens here. Oh, it would be a 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, see? So if you have to stack them, try that too. But it's really important you learn how to do this as mental math where you think of it in your head, okay? Because we're just taking away 100 from the hundreds place, all right? So let's see if you can do this, all right? It's really important to learn how to do this with mental math. It'll help you when you count money, okay? We need to write the number that is two hundreds more. So we look at the number in the hundreds place. We have a five, so we need two hundreds more. Well, that would give us a 729, wouldn't it? It's just two more hundreds than the five, see? What about this one? What would be two hundreds more? We have seven in the hundreds place, and two more would be a nine, wouldn't it? So we'd have 984. See that? What about numbers that are 200s less? So what would be 200s less than this 348? Well, that means we're going to take away 2 from the hundreds place. So we're going to have 148. What would be 200s less than 671? What's 2 less than 6? That's a 4. So we'd have 471. So here's what we're trying to do in our head, okay? We have 671, and we're taking away 200. We're trying to do this in our head. We know that the 200 has a 0 in the tens place, 0 in the ones place, so the tens and ones are going to stay the same, right? We're just changing the hundreds place, and we're taking away 2 from it, see? So we're trying to do that in our head. So if we're doing 200s less, we just take 2 away from the hundreds place, see? If you had $6.71 and you spent 
you'd have $4.71, see? So it's going to help you in the future if you can do this, all right? Write the number that is two tens more. So it doesn't say hundreds, it just says tens, right? So what would happen if we added two more tens to this? Well, six, seven, eight, we'd have 183, wouldn't we? What would be two tens more than 341? Two tens more than a four would be a six, we'd have 361, see? So we're adding two tens, we're just adding a 20, aren't we? 341 plus 20. And because there's a zero in the ones place of the 20, the one's going to stay the same. We're going to add the two tens to the tens place. That's going to give us a six. And then we drop down our three, see? So we're doing that in our head by just adding two more tens, okay? Let's see if we can do this one. We need to write the number that is two tens less. So we have 367. What would be two tens less than a six? What's two less than six? What's six minus two? We take two away, we get a 347, 347, okay? Now this one's going to be a little harder. You might have to make a list, okay? We have 905, and we need two tens less, but there are no tens. Look, there's no tens. How do we make two tens less? We regroup. This 9 is going to become an 8, and we're going to give that digit that we took away from the hundreds place, we're going to give it to the tens place. Because remember, ten tens are a hundred, all right? So now we have eight hundred, ten tens, and five ones. Now we can take the two tens away. Counting backwards, we would say nine hundred five, eight hundred ninety-five, eight hundred eighty-five, that's taking away a 10 each time, see? Then it would be 875, 865, see? And we could keep going. But we want to take away two 10s, so this would end up being, if we took a 2 away from this 10 right here that we regrouped, we would have 885. So if you still need to use paper and pencil or models when there's a 0 in the 10s place and you need to take 10s away, that's okay. You'll slowly get better and better at it. If you know that 10 less than 905 is 895, then that'll help you to go down to the next one, okay? Let's take a look at some critical thinking here. This is going to help you with mental math also. We have 32 plus 10 equals 42. We're just adding a 1 to the tens place, see? And there's a 0 in the ones place, so the 2 stays the same. Then 320 plus 100 equals what? Well, what are they trying to show us? Let's look at it as stacked problems, okay? We have 32 plus 10, and we can see that's going to equal 42. That's an easy one, isn't it? There's a 4 in the tens place and a 2 in the ones place. Now, look at this problem when I cover these two zeros in the ones place. Look what, look what the equation looks like now. It looks exactly like the other one. So what's happening is, because a zero got added to the end here, see, and a zero got added to the end here from that, well, then a zero is going to get added to the end of our sum. We're going to have 420. It's the same thing. We'd have 420. There's just a zero added here and a zero added here to these digits. So there's a zero added to the sum. See, it's the same thing. All right? Look at this one. We have 17 plus 10 equals 27. All we're doing is adding 110, right? So that's a 27. Does that make sense so far? Well, then 170 plus 100 is going to equal what? There's a zero added to the end of this number and a zero added to the end of this number and it would make them look alike. See? Right down here. See how it makes them look like it's the identical problem? There's just zeros added at the end. So our sum for this equation is just going to be this sum with a zero added at the end. 270. 
We can see if we add them, we're going to have a 2 in the hundreds place, a 7 in the tens place, and a 0 in the ones place. It's the exact same problem. See? All right? So try practicing counting on or counting back by hundreds or tens and see how far you can go without making a mistake. And if you can play with somebody, whoever goes the farthest without making a mistake is the winner. Okay? It's going to be really good for mental math for you, all right? Make you really fast at counting money when you need to also, all right? I'll see you next video. Bye.